I'm Neil Swidey for the Boston Globe magazine, and I've come here to Singapore to see the future of driving, which actually doesn't involve drivers. The first experience is a little bit unsettling. You get behind the passenger seat, and there's no one behind the wheel. And you plug it in into your smartphone about where you want it to go, and it just goes. And you can actually look over and see the brake pedal go down. A pedestrian kind of darts in front without seeing it. The car is going along its route and has to use the history of what other people have done, where they might be going, what their rate of speed is, what their possible trajectories might be, and make an instant calculation. My guide to the future of transit in Singapore is Emilio Frizzoli, an Italian-born MIT professor who regularly travels here from Cambridge to advise the government. For now, he mostly uses conventionally driven vehicles like taxis and Ubers to get around. My hope is that you will have a much bigger presence of these shared vehicles, which may be driving by themselves. And that will enable is a transportation system that can serve an increasing population size without necessarily increasing the volume of the number of cars in the city. Singapore is a tiny nation, uh, very geographically constrained, high population density. Here is a very modern, clean country that has almost efficiency built into its DNA. In Singapore, what I see is the potential to cut out the middleman there, to just eliminate the human driver from whole sections of their roadways. From the efficient world of Singapore, I come to Mountain View, California where Google is planning a more ambitious project to transform every kind of car to a self-driving car. So one of the challenges is going to be how do these vehicles integrate with kind of the, the social conventions in the, in the different cities that they'll move to. We haven't really dug into that yet. That'll be one of the challenges we'll, we look forward to. And that's one of the really exciting things about getting our, our new vehicles on the road is being able to see how they interact with people and how, how people use them. We're getting to the point where they, they deal with kind of normal driving very well. They're still a little skittish and are working to pay a lot of attention to traffic around them to make sure they're safe. So, so we need to get it so that driving is just as safe as it is today, but, but smoother. Just the resources are tremendous that Google has put behind making self-driving cars a reality. The whole promise behind this technology is not only to replicate what a human driver can do in anticipating things and reacting, but to do it better because the reality is we're not that good at this. You know, more than 90% of traffic accidents that happen every year are the result of human error. This stuff is coming and we've got to be prepared for it.